Number 30. Each of the following compounds contains a metal that can exhibit more than one ionic charge. Name these compounds. All right, so we did a very similar question like this in number 29. So if you need more practice, you could always go back to that one. But let's just start now. All right, so we have A. NiCO3. Now, they tell us that in each example, there's a metal. So anytime that you see a metal, this is always going to be ionic bonding, right? So no covalent bonding here. So we're just basic, basically following the ionic bonding rules here. But there's two things that you have to take into consideration, whether your metal is a main group metal or if it's a transition metal. So you guys should remember where your main groups are and your transition. Remember, your main groups are group 1 and 2, and then 13 through 18. Your transitions are going to be 3 all the way to 12. And these are the ones that do not have the oxidation trend. What you should know that we'll just list here because we're going to need it is your oxidation state trend or your charge trend. So you should remember that group one is always a plus one. Group two is always a plus two. There's no trend for transitions. 13 is a plus three. 14 is a plus or minus four. And then you work backwards. Minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. So those are the charges of each individual atom in that group when they form a compound. All right. But if we look over here, I have nickel right? And nickel is right here. It's a transition metal. So I'm not going to know specifically the charge. And for transition metals, right, we always name the metal name, the Roman numeral, sorry, the non-metal gets the IDE ending. And the Roman numeral is always, if I can write it over here, the Roman numeral always stands for the oxidation state of the metal. It's not how many of you have of the metal. It's always the oxidation state, the charge of the metal. All right. So that's going to be super important, but we can name it as such. So here we have nickel. So I'm just going to write nickel. Now this one's a little tricky because I see that I have carbon and I have oxygen, right? So I can't just say carbide oxide, right? But this means that if you have more than one element that you need to group together, it's always going to be a polyatomic and you guys should memorize your polyatomics. So remember that carbonate is CO3 two minus. You would only be able to spot that out if you memorized your polyatomics and that takes time. I totally understand. So just over time, just kind of memorize, use flashcards or write it down, whatever works for you. But I can um, notice that CO3 is a polyatomic because I know that carbonate is CO3 with the two minus charge. So this has to be nickel carbonate. Now, the only thing that's missing is this Roman numeral in the middle because this is a transition metal. You need a Roman numeral. So that means that we have to crisscross back up. So... Remember, whenever we took the charges and we crisscrossed down to get the subscripts, you could easily take what you have at the bottom and crisscross back up to get the charges. So how many nickels do you have? You only have one. And how many total carbonates do you have? You only have one because technically it would have been a parentheses one, right? Those are the numbers that you take up. You do not take this three up because the three is part of the polyatomic carbonate. So this one will crisscross back up telling you that carbonate was a negative one. And this one crisscrosses back up to tell you that nickel was a plus one. So now you're at this stage. Nickel was a plus one and carbonate was a minus one. Now you should always double check your negatives. You will always know the charge of your negative and you could always check it out um, to see if this Roman numeral is the right one. However, from my knowledge of the polyatomic carbonate, carbonate is always a minus two charge. And here it's a negative one. That means that it was simplified. So we have to unsimplify it by multiplication. How do I go from a negative one to a negative two? I can just times by two to get my negative two. 
but you got to be fair. Whatever you do here, you got to do on the other side. So this would be times two as well. So nickel would really be a plus two, and that's the number that goes down here. So it's not a one. That's why we have to double check. So in this case, for A, it would be nickel two carbonate. So be careful. Always check your um, ionic compounds, especially transition metals. That's how they get you. B, MOO3. All right, so MO is molybdenum. It's over here, number 42. That's a transition metal, so it's going to be ionic. So we state the metal name, and then the nonmetal gets the IDE ending. So this is M-O-L-Y-B-D-E-N-U-M, molybdenum. And then we have oxygen, so that's oxide. But since molybdenum is a transition metal, you have to put a Roman numeral. So we got to play the same game as we did before. We take the subscripts and we crisscross them back up to get the charges. There was one molybdenum and three oxygens. So let's crisscross them. This three crisscrossed back up to tell me that molybdenum was a plus three. This one crisscrossed back up to tell me that oxygen was a negative one. So now we're at this stage. MO was a plus three and O was a minus one. Always check your negative. Does this make sense? Well, oxygen is over here and it should have been a negative two. So that means that this one's also simplified. So how are we going to get the negative two? Just like before, we times by two to get the negative two. But you got to be fair. This one should be times by two as well. So MO should have had a charge of a plus six. And that's the number that goes in there. And six is uh, VI. So this one would be molybdenum six oxide. So just be careful. And that's the answer for B. C. C-O-N-O-3-2. All right, well, we have cobalt. Sounds like a metal. Let's just make sure. Cobalt's over here. It's a transition metal. So we need the metal name, the nonmetal, or the polyatomic, and then the Roman numeral. So cobalt is C-O, so it'd be cobalt. And since it's a uh, transition, I need that Roman numeral. And now I see that I have multiple atoms. That means that it's a polyatomic ion. And NO3 is nitrate. That just comes from spotting it out, memorizing it. NO3 will always be nitrate. So this is cobalt, some Roman numeral, nitrate. Now we have to crisscross back up, right? So... There was one cobalt, there was two nitrates. This one crisscrosses telling me that nitrate was a negative one. This two crisscrosses back up to tell me that cobalt was a plus two. So CO should be a plus two and NO3 is a minus one. Double check your negative, but this one or this time it checks out. Nitrate should always be a negative one. So if this checks out, the cobalt checks out, and the plus two is the actual charge. So that means that I can safely put a two there. So this one would be cobalt two nitrate. And that gets rid of C. Halfway there. So let's just erase this. And let's just make this a little bit nicer just in case I need more space. And now we are ready to go. So D. V2O5. V is vanadium, and vanadium's right here. It's a transition metal, so this would be ionic. So metal name, vanadium. Roman numeral, because it's a transition, and oxygen turns into oxide. Now we just have to figure out what that Roman numeral is. We got to crisscross these subscripts back up. This two crisscross tells me that oxygen was a negative two. This five crisscrosses tells me that vanadium was a plus five. So now we're here. Vanadium was a plus five. Oxygen was a negative two. Double check your negative. Does oxygen being a negative two make sense? Yes, it does, because oxygen's right here, and it should be a negative two. So if that's true, vanadium is also true. So that plus five goes down here as your Roman numeral. That's the charge. So this one would be vanadium... 
vanadium, five oxide. That one's good. E, MnO2. Mn is manganese, which is right here. That's a transition metal, so that means it's ionic. So I need the metal name, which is magnesium, not magnesium, manganese. Mag, that's an A, manganese. It's a transition, so we need the Roman numeral. And oxygen should be oxide, because we still need that IDE ending. Now I just need the Roman numeral, which means I need to just crisscross the charges, right? So there was one manganese and two oxygens. This two crisscrosses to tell me that Mn was a plus two. This one told me that oxygen was a minus one. So I'm just going to say that Mn was a plus two. Oxygen was a minus one. And always double check your um, negative. In this case, oxygen is a negative one. But does that make sense? Nope, because oxygen should be a negative two. So in this case, we have to unsimplify by multiplication. Negative 1 times negative 2 will get me the negative 2. So whatever I do here, I have to do to manganese. So I have to times that by 2, which means that Mn should be a plus 4. And that's the charge that goes here. 4 is a 1V. So this would be manganese 4, 1V, oxide. And then last but not least, we have F. Fe2O3. So we have iron. Iron is right here. That's a transition metal. Ionic compound. We need the Roman numeral. So it should be iron, Roman numeral, oxygen, just like before it turns into oxide. And now I need to find out the Roman numeral. I need a crisscross. So the 2 tells me that oxygen was a negative 2. The 3 tells me that iron was a plus 3. So let me just clean that up. Fe was a plus 3. Oxygen was a minus 2. Does the negative make sense? Yes, it does, because oxygen should have been a minus 2. So if that checks out, this checks out. And that means that the plus 3 should be the Roman numeral of 3 i's. So that's this one. Iron 3 oxide. And check that one off. And there we go. 30 is done. Ooh. So if you need more uh, practice with your Roman numerals and transition metals, go back to number 29. It's a very similar problem. And the more practice, the better. That's how you guys get good at chemistry. I promise you that. The more practice, the better you will get. This type of course is all about practice problems. So try to do as many as you can. And I'll be here for you guys every step of the way. So it, it's kind of easy to know that. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. If you liked it, you know, click the like button. Um, if you want, you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you for that. I'll see you guys all in the next question. Bye-bye.